Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is October 2nd, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk about a recent observation of an instance uh, of a never be seen, before seen occurrence of two category five tropical cyclones occurring in the Western and Northern Pacific for the past 24 hour period, which includes super typhoon Kong Ray and major hurricane in the Central Pacific near Hawaii, Laka. Both of these storms have subsequently weakened to below category five intensity or now category four storms but when this event occurred earlier today earlier tuesday it was a first seen instance in which two category five tropical cyclones occurred in this region of the world simultaneously according to reports from weather underground we've had other instances where there were two category five tropical cyclones simultaneously ongoing but not yet at least in our records for this region of the world now there are some climate change related discussions of note related to these storms and i will talk about them later with regards to trends for strong storms but before i get into that i'd just like to talk a bit about these storms at present so it's worth noting that Kong Ray is still a super typhoon with 130 knots maximum sustained winds or, or maximum sustained winds in excess of 145 to 150 miles per hour. The storm is expected to move off to the northwest before making a turn toward the north and coming very close to the Korean Peninsula and striking Japan, the Northern Island of Japan, as well on the 6th and 7th, well, between the 5th, 6th, and 7th of October, according to this forecast from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. It is worth noting that Kong Ray is expected to weaken, according to the Joint Typhoon Warning Center forecast, as it moves to the north. Another picture of Kong Ray here in the infrared satellite shot shows the storm moving off to the north and west with very large circulation and area of cloud cover. Walaka itself is positioned to the west of the Hawaiian island chain, it recently passed very close to, or is, is passing very close to Johnson Atoll a remote readout in the Pacific, which is likely to experience very extreme conditions. Fortunately, Walaka is not expected to interact with the Hawaiian island chain or the, the large islands directly, although it is likely to produce some amazing swells for the, the south facing be beaches and subsequently for the western and north facing beaches as the storm moves off to the north. Storm is presently at a 932 millibar minimum central pressure with 150 mile per hour maximum sustained wind intensity. So overall, a, a still a very strong category for tropical cyclone. Now looking at GFS model guidance, I just want to go ahead and run this model to show you where these storms are, are expected to go. We did already talk about the projected track from the joint Typhoon Warning Center for Wallaku, and the GFS model does have, I'm sorry, for Kong Ray, does have Kong Ray moving off in a, along about the same track as the Joint Typhoon Warning Center guidance, with a near landfall or a landfall in South Korea on, let's see, on October, it looks like late, uh, yeah, early October 6th, and a potential for a second landfall near the Northern Island of Japan on October 7th. It is worth pointing out that 
the GFS model does show a stronger storm than the projected intensity in the Joint Typhoon Warning Center projected course and intensity. So something to keep an eye on because a, a 953 millibar storm would, would be a rather strong strike for, for South Korea if that did occur. Well, Laku is predicted to get entangled in a trough and be pulled off to the north and east toward the Alaskan and Canadian coasts. Now, with regards to hurricanes and, and human-caused climate change, there are a number of recent statements in the science that I, I just like to point out to you. One of them was provided in this article by Stefan Ramsdorf, Carrie Emanuel, Michael Mann, and Jim Cosen on May 30th at Real Climate, talking about an observed increase in the number of the strongest tropical cyclones seen around the globe. And according to research by Kerry Emanuel, there has been a, a significant increase in the number of storms with wind speeds in excess of 175 kilometers per hour, that storms with wind speeds in excess of 200 kilometers per hour had doubled in number since the 1980s. And those with 250 kilometer per hour intensity or greater had tripled with the most extreme storms increasing by more than triple at the top of this intensity range. Storms with wind intensity of 250 kilometers per hour or greater are category five intensity. So, so this study by Kerry Emanuel of MIT does note an increase in the number of strongest storms over recent years as the earth has warmed. It's worth noting that the National Climate Assessment provided for the US government has stated that the intensity, frequency, and duration of North Atlantic hurricanes, as well as the frequency of the strongest hurricanes, have all increased since the 1980s. So another measure showing a visible increase in the number of hurricanes, particularly the number of intense storms in the North Atlantic since the 1980s. Weather Underground in its own statement today provided more of a question as to whether or not an increase in the number of category five storms has been observed, but during doing a basic mathematical analysis of the graph that they've provided of, of globally observed category five tropical cyclones shows 4.8 category five tropical cyclones occurring in the 1990s for each year on average, 5.5 category five storms for each year on average during the 2000s, and an average of six so far during the 2010s with eight so far occurring this year. And of course, as for the 2018 hurricane season and typhoon season is not over yet. It's worth noting that the weather other underground graph does not go back to the 1980s, which previous studies like those that I've referenced from Kerry Emanuel have. Overall, human-caused climate change is expected to increase both hurricane intensity and the peak potential intensity of storms, as well as rainfall. And we have a number of other studies showing an, an observed increase in intense rainfall amounts globally, some of those events associated with hurricanes, as well as fingerprint studies that show storms like Florence have greatly increased rainfall potential due to human-caused climate change with Florence's rainfall intensity increased by 50% in a recent study. The primary driver of increasing hurricane intensity due to human-caused climate change is a warming ocean surface, which provides more fuel for storms in the form of convection. In addition, atmospheric water vapor loading increases as atmospheric temperatures in increase, which also provides more fuel for storms, in particular, more fuel for extreme rainfall events. So 
yet another instance of 